chaser. We're moving along with the chaser build and getting this thing another step closer to getting back on the track and having fun with it because this car needs a lot of work. But like I said, today we're getting right to it. You guys can see we've been stacking up a ton of stuff getting this car ready and I am so excited to show you what we have for today. Before we get started, I do have to give a massive thank you to our friends over at Fitment Industries. For every single build in this garage, we have used them for every piece of suspension, wheels, tires, etc. They make it extremely easy to find exactly what we need if we're not sure about specs, sizing, or whatever the case, they have a really awesome gallery to make it easy. I mean, if we're looking for something for the Porsche, for example, we can go into the Fitment Industries gallery, search our 2016 Porsche Cayman GTS, and they'll have a whole list of other people with this car with different wheel sizes, different tire sizes, to make sure we can find the perfect fit for our car. So if you guys are interested in checking that out, you can make sure to hit the link in the description box below. Like I said, they can help you find anything, wheels, tire, suspension, fitment, anything. It's really awesome. You can even get miscellaneous parts off the site as well. So Fitment Industries will be linked down below. Let's go ahead and get started on the chaser. All right, quick update since the last episode you guys saw this. We did the front bumper as well as the interior and it came out super sick. But while I was gone on a little trip, Tim went ahead and did an extra mod for the interior of the car. We had this little harness bar laying around in the shop and Tim modified a little bolt hole right here where the seat belts go to be able to run this harness bar. So now when we're using the seats and the steering wheel and everything, we have a proper set of harnesses to go along with it just to make it a little bit safer. This is actually pretty nice, Tim. It's safety. It's safety, baby. What Tim has gone ahead and started with is getting our shifter out. You know why, Tim? Because the transmission's gonna drop. <laughs> we have a brand new fat, beefy clutch going in this thing. That's one of the things that we really needed for this car, especially if I'm gonna be drifting it, is a clutch that can handle something like that. And with the clutch that's currently in it, I think it's pretty roasted and pretty rat nested down there. So we're gonna find that out, but today, ultimately, to start our chaser project out today, we're gonna be dropping the trans, and replacing the clutch. Look at this thing, guys. She is really coming together. I'm stoked to make this thing fully drivable again. And I keep forgetting that we still have the chocolate milk issue. Well, like I said, first things first, let's go ahead and get this shifter All right, out. you can pull her. She ready? Yeah. All right. oh, oh, what was that? Something came out. Yeah, it's this guy. You got it? We need that guy, and we need this guy. Okay, step one done. <laughs> Let's rip out the transmission. Our main reason, I mean, not uh, granted, it should be done anyways, because we're drifting, but the main reason we wanted to get a clutch like this was because of this. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's already wire hanging out of whatever bracket this is on the transmission. So I think when we take this off, our clutch is going to be completely it's roasted. Gonna be, there's gonna be baby birds in there, <laughs> just chilling. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but it's pretty wiry, so. I think I can hear them right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think once we get this off, oh, there we go. It's gonna be pretty, pretty rough in there. So let's go ahead and start pulling everything off and get this transmission off. Oh, oh gross, dude. Gross. It is, it is hairy in there. That is not good. <laughs> I can't believe this thing was driving. It might have something left. Maybe. I okay. know. I know one side's probably metal because you can hear it chatter. It's yeah. Like, tch, tch, tch. Okay. We're getting close. We're gonna take everything off the transmission now and drop this thing. Uh, there's so much freaking wire. There it is. All in here, dude. Look at this. I'm gonna. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy, dude. Is that this? This is from the clutch, right? Like yeah, this isn't just clutch in fibers. There. That's actually not good for you to hold or breathe in. <laughs> Do you smell it? It stinks. <laughs> it that's so yeah. It stinks. <laughs> that is crazy. If you look in here, dude, it's just fiber everywhere. That is gonna be a pain in the butt to clean up. I'm surprised the clutch has worked this long like that. <laughs> so the JZX transmissions are actually pretty cool because as you guys saw, there's two little covers on either side of the transmission. And what those holes do is number one, of course, give you access to see inside the transmission like we can and see how destroyed it is. But also it gives you access to the pressure plate bolts 
which you can take off from inside the transmission so that when you pull the transmission off, it all comes off with the transmission, making it a little bit easier to get the transmission off and put it back on as well. So we went ahead and got all the pressure plate bolts out. And now that those are out, we're gonna go ahead and take off the bolts to the transmission and this should all just come off as one big piece. There we go. There, now I can Dude, that thing is roasted. Look at this. Oh my God. How is this still drivable? Get a close up of this. Look at all the fibers on that, the pressure plate. Yeah. Dude, look how roasted. It's literally falling apart. Need a shirt. <laughs> Holy so yeah, I would say it is uh, definitely time for a new clutch. All right, I think this is an appropriate time to show you guys what we have going in the car today. So, okay. You guys can see absolute destruction. Oh, that's, that's disgusting. Today, we're gonna be installing a brand new, beefy and beautiful Zeti twin plate clutch to take everything and anything that we throw out this car. It is beautiful, it's beefy, it's all the girth, it's to be able to last through everything. Clutch kicks, if we add more power, this clutch is gonna do it all. And, and it's overall gonna feel way, way nicer in the car, especially while driving. And it's just good to have something that I can be confident with and not have to worry about. So this is what we're gonna be throwing into the car now that we got the old roasted one out. And I did notice that it is stock, so it was just a stock clutch in there. Um, so it's good to upgrade no matter what. Just noticed something. Pull off the flywheel, sir. Oh, oh that's the not bad. okay. No, that's okay. I don't know, there's like a lot of oil on the flywheel oh, bolts. Oh, weird. I think the bolts actually seal out oil. Look, you can see through where the rear main is. That's probably what it is. It's pretty crazy. I've honestly never seen that. Huh. Or oil like is behind the passage. Sick, well that's good news. Yeah, so today, I don't know if I mentioned, we do have the flywheel to go along with the clutch. So everything gets replaced. It'd be very nice. Looks like the rear main seal's actually been done. Yeah, it does, right? Huh. We definitely got a good car, aside from the chocolate milk situation. <laughs> All right, first things first, before we can actually install a new clutch, we have to put in the new throughout bearing. And this is quite the process. So Tim went ahead and actually ordered us a brand new kit because just in case, I mean, we figured if we're gonna already do the clutch, we might as well just do everything new. So brand new throughout bearing here. I don't know what this is called. This is like the thing that holds your throughout bearing in. We need to take this guy off, clean all of this fiber off and reuse this spindle, but then use all the new throughout bearing stuff. And quite the process, so I need to disconnect our new clutch from the new flywheel so that we can just have the pressure plate and then go ahead, take this out, put all of this onto the new setup. Let's do it. That was a new throughout bearing. Probably the hardest part of the day is complete. We have got the trans out, clutch off, new throughout bearing onto the new clutch. I've disassembled the clutch and the flywheel. So now we can go ahead and stick the flywheel on, put the new clutch on, put the trans on. We can button all this up and move forward. But overall, not too bad. You ready, Tim? Let's mm -hmm. throw her in.
Well, since we have officially made it halfway, it's time to start on the next mod. While Tim is gonna go ahead and torque down our flywheel and get things ready so we can put the pressure plate on, I'm actually gonna head to the tire shop because we have a brand new setup for the chaser. And we'll explain this a little bit more once we get down to it. But first off, let's load these into the truck and get ready to get these mounted. It is effing hot now. Again, massive thank you to Fitment Industries. They made it super easy to get exactly what I needed. Any tire brand, any wheel brand, they can get it for you. Best of all, if you don't know what size you need, use their gallery. It's super, super simple. So we actually got a set of Anovia wheels, which you guys will see in just a bit to use for the drift car. Before we dive too deep into it, let's go ahead and get these mounted. I'll show you guys exactly what we got. Always hooking us up. Thank you guys. Yeah, we'll see you for the next one. It's nice and easy every time. All right, next up, let's get to the shop, unload these things, put the trans on, and we'll go into detail what exactly we got for the chaser. All right, mission success. We got the wheels and tires back. Now it's time to actually install the clutch. Tim went ahead and mounted up and torqued down our flywheel, which means all this can go back together. We're gonna go ahead and put the actual clutch on, put the pressure plate on, then the transmission. Well, thank you. Sound effect. Clutch is on. Time for the transmission. Oh, oh yeah, she's closing. She's closing. She's closing. Oh, there it is. Keep going. Yeah. Last but not least, the shifter is in. Transmission is connected. Shifter is. Almost in. All we gotta do now is put the drive shaft on, fill this thing up with fluid, and transmission is good to go. That's a good sign. Finally, the moment that we have all been waiting for the new wheel and tire setup. So for the Chaser's new setup, we have the beautiful Anovia Kano wheel. The Anovia wheels are a very affordable wheel that we can sustain, especially for drifting. We can have a bunch of these and have a bunch of different setups, and not to mention they look absolutely sick. And I think that now that we have a nice base color like this gray, I kind of want to do something crazy for the next setup. But I figured we could run these, especially for fronts or rears, whatever the case. Uh, and for tires, we didn't get anything too special. We just got whatever I could find in the highest tread wear because I'm still learning and I don't want something super grippy. We have sort of grippy tires up front, and I figured these would be a great set to have in the rears. Oh 
man, the condos look spicy on the chaser. Now, we're actually not gonna be putting all four on because a little bit of a grippier setup up front, which is what we want for drifting. We're gonna use the condos for our rear, and we actually can't put our new front tires on on the front because we have full suspension going in very, very soon. I wanna wait for that. We're just gonna be putting the condos on the rear and having our nice little bit grippier setup on the front so that this thing is ready to go for our next drift day. Dude, these wheels actually look super sick and I like the color. I, I think I kind of want to do like chrome or purple just to go a little bit crazy, but rears are on. Now the real test of success today is how does the clutch feel? And that's what I am going to test right now. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's actually not as heavy as I expected. Let's go ahead and start her up. Ooh, a little chattery. Got that twin plate clutch sound. That's sick. Let's see. Oh yeah, she goes into gear just fine and actually into reverse now, which I don't know if that's a chaser problem or we were having a lot, a really hard time getting into reverse, but now it just goes right in. Super nice. All right, well that's a good sign. I think we should uh, break her in right here. Chattery too. Yeah, that's Get burning. I think we broke rim proper here. Oh yeah, that's how you break in a clutch. That's how you break in some Anovia wheels and a clutch, baby. <laughs> how to break out my gloves for that one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, my camera died, so we have the phone right now, but I feel like this is a good time to go ahead and drive the car, give it a little <laughs> after the donut and burnout. Uh, do a little test drive with the new clutch. And, Immediately, what I really like and notice about the clutch is it's, it's not very hard, but it's extremely responsive, which I really like. Oh, this car feels so good. That's why I have a, such a hard time thinking that something's wrong with it, but we definitely got to look into it and fix it. But clutch feels so good. Not super tight or harsh, but it's extremely, extremely responsive. Oh. Oh, it's so good. And of course, we got the new harness bar and the harnesses in the car. They feel awesome. Oh, good God. I need to remember that we have a new clutch in this. This thing does catch super, super quick, but I like it. I think this will be super nice for when we go drifting and just driving in general, it's not even bad. It's a twin disc clutch and you would really never even know. I can imagine it being pretty easy to drive even in traffic, but overall, very big success I feel like today. We've got the new wheels on, we've got the new clutch. She is one step closer. You not only hit the streets, but also hit the track, which I'm super pumped for. I forgot how nice this thing is actually to drive. Once my plate comes in and we have everything installed that we have, uh, I definitely can see myself driving this very, very often. That's gonna do it for our video today. The chaser is turning out awesome. I couldn't be any more stoked for it. Like I told you guys uh, at the end of this video here, really I'm just waiting on the plate to be able to drive this thing around town. And I do wanna drive, uh, we do need to do some tests to see if we have a bad head gasket or injectors. I've been driving the car a little bit and we haven't noticed any signs. We've been constantly checking the oil and there hasn't been any signs of coolant getting into the oil. So we're gonna keep an eye on it and get this situation figured out. But we're just waiting on a couple of more parts to be able to do our bigger suspension modifications and actually take this thing to the track. So stay tuned for that. But we're gonna go and end today's video here so thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and as always if you haven't already make sure you guys hit that like button leave us a comment down below and of course don't forget to subscribe in the next episode 
which is coming out Monday. You guys will see who won the little signed hood piece from the BMW M2, so stay tuned for that. Like I said, thank you guys very much for watching, and we'll see you all for the next episode. Peace out.